We're going to talk about the different types of arrow rest for archery hunting. And uh, Tyler, what is a rest exactly? Well, there's a rest, and then there are rests. And, Being arrested. Uh, yeah, uh, a rest is usually something you take on the way into the woods when you're walking on public land. You got like a mile and a half to go. Yeah, a stump or a rock or something yeah, like yeah. that. But when it comes to archery hunting, this is a rest, okay? This is the thing that your arrow lays on, rests on, before you release your bow, okay? So there are three main types that we're going to talk about today, and then there's some others that are kind of a little bit different or outdated. Uh, this is a cable-driven style rest here. There's also a limb-driven style, and then there's a bristle style rest. This is Tyler's bow. It's a Bowtech SR350, and it has the Ripcord Max IMS, which is a cable-driven style rest, okay? It's going to engage by flipping it up, and then as your bow is drawn, this cable will go down, fully engaging the rest, and then, I can't make it do it, there you go, it'll go off whenever you shoot, okay? That is a cable-driven rest. Tyler, why do you like a cable-driven rest? Because they the rest gets out of the way before the arrow leaves, so there's no contact with the rest in the arrow mm -hmm. as the arrow is leaving. Therefore, it's, you know, theoretically, it's supposed to be an arrow that is just driven by the string in a certain particular direction. They're supposed to be very accurate. And then I also like the fact that that rest in particular is almost, I mean, pretty much fully enclosed. So it would be really hard, and you can do it, but it would be really hard to actually lose the arrow once you're engaged with that rest from the rest um, so you're you know crawling around on ground and trying to shoot big deer out you know stalking them on, on the plains or wherever or on the mm -hmm. ground you end up uh, you know sometimes bumping that arrow off if you have a different style rest now one of the drawbacks of a cable driven rest is that it is connected to your cable uh, on your bow so not your string but your cables and that can kind of cause some tuning issues possibly or slow your bow down just a tad so all these are gonna have a few drawbacks and you're gonna have to just decide which which one you like better, okay? Now this is my bow, also a Bowtech SR350. I have a limb driven rest on this bow, okay? So instead of attaching to the cable, you have this string right here that goes down to your bow limb. Whenever you draw, that limb flexes, which allows this guy to come up, all right? It looks a little different than the cable driven rest, but still a very similar design in that it's kind of fully contained and falls away whenever you do release. And you never shot this rest before, this style, right? Not until this season. I, I was always a little wary of them, but I really like it yeah. now. What, what do you like about it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good. I, it's, it's a little less... Uh, there's a little less thought involved with this rest than there is the cable driven rest. With the cable driven rest you have to engage with your thumb. Pretty much on this rest, as soon as you get the arrow within the containment thing here, it's ready to shoot and it's like never going to fail. There's no room for this arrow to be in a weird spot or anything. You don't have to do anything to make this rest work. It just is ready to go when you draw your bow. I really like that about it. Now one of the things that is a drawback on this uh, well, there's two, okay, for the limb driven rest. Uh, one of them is that it's fully contained right here, but there's room in here for the arrow to move around. That can make some noise if you're spotting and stalking and doing things, but if you're in a tree, there's no way for that to really do much of anything because your arrow just sits there until it's time to shoot. The other issue with these is that you have this cord on the outside of your bow that runs down to your limb, okay? This can get caught on briars and other things going through the woods, so you have to be mindful of that. However, it's very easily repaired. All you gotta do is kind of just retie a knot and you're working again. There's no tuning to one of these limb-driven rests because the spring is engaged right now whenever the limb is not or has tension on it. The way it works is kind of inverse of the cable-driven rest where the spring actually comes up and, and takes tension off to make the arrow be in line with all the rest of your stuff, all right? There's a little bit less going on with one of these. There's timing involved, there's tuning involved with the cable driven rest where on this, it's just a little bit more basic, which can be good in an archery situation. So this is one of our intern's bow. This is Michael's bow. It's a Diamond Edge 320, okay? It's sold, ready to go, really kind of a cool setup for uh, entry-level archers or guys looking for a really good bow at not a bad price. It comes with a sight 
and a bristle style rest on this. Now, if you're an archery hunter, you've seen things like this before. All right, they've improved on them a little bit nowadays. There's a way to put your arrow in from the side. They are foolproof except for a few things. But they're really, really great because like, there's just nothing to them, right? There's no moving parts. There's no stuff to break or get in the way or get messed up too much. It's a really great rest. And you shot one like this for a while, didn't a you? A long time. Yeah. And it's fully enclosed. So you really, I mean, once you put it in, you don't have to worry about your arrow. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to get that thing out. <laughs> Uh, without actually taking it through the rest, you know, at the end of the night if you mm -hmm. don't shoot or something like that. Yeah, that's about the only way you would do it. Now, there are still, uh, you know, fallbacks for this rest. There's going to be two that I can think of since you've used it so much. Maybe you can tell me a few more if there are any. The two that come to mind for me is that there is arrow contact with the rest. So when you release, there's friction on that arrow ever so slightly, but there is friction that will slow down your arrow and also change the trajectory of your arrow, which would mean pretty much that you need to hold your form just a little more steady not that you don't need to be doing that anyways but you need to hold your form a little more steady so that you're not uh, influencing that arrow in a bad way the other thing that can happen and this is real rare and in, in real specific situations but these can actually freeze say it rains and then the temperature drops to below freezing after it rained your bristles freeze and then all of a sudden you're shooting your arrow through a solid block of something and it just doesn't function yeah so as you mentioned there is contact there mm -hmm. so um as you shoot this a lot, also this rest can sort of wear out mm -hmm. over time. It takes a lot of shots, but if you're a guy who uh, trusts their bow to last, you know, five, ten years, then it is something you might have to consider where uh, I noticed in the last one that I shot that some of the bristles actually started to kind of cross over where one of my fletchings contacted them. Mm -hmm. And as, like, as soon as something like that happens, it it's exponential it tends to get a little bit out of control pretty quickly right it, yeah once something happens that kind of puts a flaw into the system then the flaw is really expanded very quickly mm -hmm. so uh one of the good things about this rest though is that it's inexpensive compared to the other two we just looked at mm -hmm. um not that they are expensive but they're a higher price point because there's more technology involved this doesn't have a lot of technology involved so it's going to be a lower price point it's made by octane still very functional there are other types of rests out there there would be like what a lot of us know as the prong style rest, which was a non fall away, just two almost, I don't know, looks like a snake head sticking up there or something. <laughs> and uh, the way you used to tune those was you would line your fletching up to where it would go between the two prongs when you shot. That way there was no extra contact. There's also a fall away out there, which would just be kind of like the prong, but it goes out of the way. Uh, some of the people call those a flapper style rest. They still use those in competition archery a whole lot because full containment isn't as big of a deal because you're just shooting from a box at a stationary target. You wouldn't find this on compounds very often that I know of, but some guys still might do it. Some guys can still shoot from the shelf. You find that more often in uh, traditional style archery, but for compounds, it's not going to really be a thing. Is there any other type of rest that you can think of um, out there? You know, there's one that kind of just uh, kind of folds forward as mm. the arrow goes through, but it just sticks off to the side mm -hmm. like that. I don't know what it's called, but it basically, as the fletching pushes it, it goes against the riser, mm -hmm. and it's just it's just a tiny little small shelf that holds the arrow there. Basically, yeah. I uh, would not shoot one of those if I was super serious about trying to kill no, it. That's deer. usually would... on a very very beginner style yes. cheap bow or an old. It's, it's older technology yeah, too. You absolutely. Know, so. But if you have one of those, you might at least think about stepping up to something like this because it is not. Not very expensive to do and is way more effective like mm -hmm. honestly I know a lot of killers that shoot a, a bristle style shooter like this so mm -hmm. those are the kind of three types of rests that we like and have used a lot of if you have something else that you like put the put it down in the comments let us know what it is take those considerations when you start picking out a rest for your bow and I guarantee you you will like something of what we talked about here